Beloved, December 9, 2017, at 10.15 in the morning, I was thinking and meditating on a dream that God gave me the night before and seeing how events arise worldwide. As many are not yet ready and positioned in their places. Later with my family, we finished a reflection. We got on our knees to pray. And at that moment, I heard the voice of the Lord, who told me, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 12. Then, as I got up on my knees, I went quickly to get the Word of God, and I started finding it. So when I read it, I said, Lord, what are you giving me? What do you want me to to know? And at that moment, I heard a voice that said to me, Read the entire chapter. Then the voice went on saying, You will see what will soon happen. For the moment, day and hour is at the door. And who will be able to stop what is already prophesied? So when I heard this, many things came to my mind. But while I was thinking in a pause, I began to hear the voice again, where it said to me, Desolation is approaching, and like clouds blown, like the wind that run at your destiny, that's how the rebellious people are. The warning is not enough for them. Therefore, this is what the Eternal says, I will bring upon them desolation, anguish, and slaughter because I wanted to save them, but they did not want to. They have plundered my mercy and mocked my justice. I put them thought of good, but they sought the path of evil. When I heard this, beloved, I felt that all my being was shaking because What a great thing is not to be seen by Christ as really the people chosen by him. But it is a shame what is happening in all this. I kept meditating on all this because the voice paused as if for me to meditate and think. I was also shown many things later I will be able to tell you so as not to make this audio so long. But the Lord is constantly calling His children in all places, in all sites. And many, thank the Lord, are paying attention. But unfortunately, others do not. And what is coming, beloved, is going to come. It does not matter if we are ready or not, because the time is fulfilled. The voice continued saying to me, I gave them instructions and they rejected them. So her and terror will take hold of them, wise in their opinion and lacking in understanding, a rebellious people who pride themselves on their rebellious behavior. The day of their slaughter is near, and like cows to the slaughterhouse they will go. Foolish, lacking in understanding, he continued saying, who venerate the world and love its glory. But in a minute, what they have will be undone. And when my mercy was with them, they did not remember the needy and afflicted. In a moment, everything will be taken from them because they obtain it for themselves. At that moment, A movie was passed to me, beloved, of how many brothers, because I knew there were Seventh-day Adventist brothers, and many possessions, had many possessions, a lot of money, many things they could do, but nevertheless, they lived for themselves, and not to do that the glory of God And the message of God reached many places, helped many in need. 
So I looked at all this and watched as the Lord took account of all this, his angels writing all this. So when he said that in a moment everything will be taken away because they obtain it for themselves, I saw great anguish because those who had many possessions and a lot of money in the bank, many things, suddenly they were left with nothing and were as if they were insane. They could not conceive that in what they had put their support, their strength no longer existed. So, when I was seeing all this, all this bitterness that these people were experiencing, suddenly the voice continued again saying, Proud, that by learning from each other they magnify themselves, and as when the cobra opens its neck, but they did not realize that their behavior was mortal. They will have no rest because even when their delights are ending, evil will come upon them because they forged their interests and exalted themselves and never thought about their fall. I give them my Saturdays and they violate them. I gave them 1888, and they rejected it. I gave them the health reform, and they mocked. I gave them my sanctuary, and made them their own sanctuary. I gave them the solemnity of marriage, and I gave them my Saturdays, because all have rejected my ordinances. Mortality will come upon them. So, me too, as they have rejected me, I reject them. And I will bring the evil that I thought. When he said this, dear brothers, something terrible was unleashed. It was as if all the winds at the same time around the world had been unleashed. Those scenes of so much suffering, so much pain were terrible. It was a global shouting that there was for all the things that were happening. I could not conceive what was happening at that moment. It was a very tense moment for me because it was something worldwide. Because I had seen in different places, but this time it was an intense thing. It was something like there was no way to escape what I was seeing there. Then at that moment, while I finished seeing that, I heard again the voice that said, People, quick to speak and slow to hear, quick between their own feet, but without direction. Many cry for you because they want you to wake up, but you Lying on a linen bed, you go up to your thoughts, glory, and wealth. It is not wise to see evil and turn away. He said, you think you are a benefactor of everything? What will become of you on the day of the slaughter? Plunder and weeping. You thought your days will not pass and that what is yours will exist forever? Could it be you don't know of what you are made? Seeing the path you reject it and understanding it, you delay it. At that moment, another scene began to happen upon me. I was seeing at that time how in different parts of the world I saw the people of God, those who claimed to be the people of God rather, because they were Seventh-day Adventists. Then I said, Lord, but this is your people. But suddenly my companion appeared and said to me, Look well. Look well if it really is the people. So when I looked, I saw that in each of them their faces there was a 
color like gray. So I asked, but why? Then he told me, come and see. And when he told me, come and observe, I saw how they, in secret, had a double life. And many of them were leaders, pastors, elders. Then I said, Lord, but what is this? How long are you going to tolerate this? Then at that moment, he told me, this I will not tolerate any more. My grace is enough. Then word came again, to repeat the words again, again to me and said, Lazy, lacking in understanding. There is no mercy for them forever. Remember Jerusalem? That very few survived among themselves. Will it be that now it will be different? Why do you say that I am your savior when you loved to be like Lot's wife? Why do you say you obey me when you live as Lot lived? Didn't I have to send angels to rescue them because they were blind like them? What human has gone up to heaven or came down to give testimony of how to get there? But I tell you, he said, I was, I went with you. I returned to my father and I even sent the Holy Spirit, one independent of us to convince you of truth and judgment and to show you the way of how to get there. So when he said that, he paused and said, What then do you say? What then do you say? So when he said like this, he stopped. And when he stopped, I said, Lord, help us. Help us because this is tremendous. What is coming? And how more can we tell the people? What else is there to do to tell them to get re prepare, get ready, forget about the things of this world? Because this don't have place. And there, what we have in front is that our Lord is coming and that we have to prepare ourselves. Then he repeated the question, so what do you say? doesn't exist. I don't know him. He answered the same question. Then he continued saying, lacking in understanding, guided by the father of lies, that you believe how to get to heaven and you, your ways lead to eternal death. Then he paused again and said, wake up, wake up. So I said to Jerusalem, But they did not see, they did not see that by hanging me on the cross for them, their grace ended, but mercy was extended to the innocent. Hurry, he kept saying, understand, because the bad day in tightness is approaching, and who in disobedience will be able to free? My word surrounds the earth in clay vessels. But many rejected, kept saying, As Jerusalem, you thought that my word is deposited with proud clergy. Didn't I arrive in a manger? He said, Didn't I have to borrow a coat? Didn't I live as a poor? Truly, truly. I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven, kept saying. At that time, I saw, beloved brothers, like many, 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 many people, out of love for all the possessions they had in this world, for the love of their comfort, 
not to look bad with your families, to go along with each other. Others stayed and continued doing what they were doing when inside them they knew what they should do. And they had received a direct call from God because the Holy Spirit had worked in them, but for fear of what they would say, for fear of their families, they did not do what the Lord said. So when I was done watching all of this, some questions followed. Then he began to say, and why? Where did you, your wealth come from? Who gave it to you? Wise without understanding. He said, who run to their destruction thinking that you are winners? Did I not teach you that the true gain is in laying up treasures in heaven? Didn't I put you as administrators? Is he who administrate the owner or is someone else? He asked, but I tell you that I am the owner. And he who gathers with me does not scatter. Was I not crushed by you? So what will you do for me? When he said this, my being fell apart. Because in my heart, what I want to do is the will of God in all facets of my life. But we know that if we don't hold on to him, many times, sometimes we fail. Then I said, Lord, what a higher stature you are asking for. However, we are told that we can live in the lowest stature and be accepted by you. Help us, Lord. Then I said, I saw how in different places in the pulpit they were preaching things that were irrelevant, things that were not for this time, things that were vain. And then at that moment, I kept thinking and I said, Lord, how can we? How can we continue to carry this out so that people can understand that they have to prepare, that you are at the door, that this message that you have left are the present truth for this time, that these messages that you have left are the present truth for this time. Then at that moment, I heard again the voice that said to me, this is my teaching, that the one who has, give to the one who does not have. That the one who receives the brother in faith does not treat him as a stranger in his land. Your brother must watch over you as well as you over him. Do not rebuke with injury, but with love and justice. Redeem time for the needy and make preparations for their arrival. Do not say this land is mine because all the earth and its fullness and its inhabitants that's in them they inhabit are mine by right and redemption. Be equitable with each other as your Father who is in heaven makes it rain on good and bad. Watch over the family integrity of each one because like the people of Israel in the desert, where each one had his place and privacy, so do also. Remember my feast days and come celebrate with me, all in common, as an anticipation of the eternity. And while I was listening, beloved, to these instructions, I could see at a given moment, I saw how the Lord led his people in the past, and how he was 
instructing them with love, with patience in all things. But blessed be the Lord. There is always rebellion. And the Lord always, always was there behind them, bringing their, them admonition by different people. Through his word, through all the characters that have existed in all of history, that we find some of them are also reflected in the Bible. Others are extended to us more through the spirit of prophecy, what they did to guide people, but nevertheless, there was always rebellion. So while I was seeing all this, went again to continue the instructions and said, Do not take advantage of your brother when you see him down. Because truly I tell you, I was among you, as the smallest being, the greatest. Serve, and you will be served. Give, and you will be given great measure and overflowing. Do not live for nothing, because to whom God calls, he those grants, gifts, ministry, and operation. Learn from me, kept saying, that I am meek and humble of her heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And if your brother offends you, do not be cruel to him. Bring your anguish to me, and I will take care of it, he kept saying. Subdue my land that I have given you as an inheritance, and my blessing will be upon it. At that time, beloved, I saw many people, Many people were in the field sowing. That scene was so beautiful, so wonderful. A scene of peace and tranquility. Of the most remote mountains in different parts of the world. People who suffered from disease but struggled and continued until God restored them. Others who were a little more they looked more overflowing, more stronger, and there also were. They were all in a common, preparing for the final time. So while I was seeing all this, the voice continued telling me, Do not worry about the bad day, because even in it, the wisdom is at the door. Be humble, and do not show ostentation. What then? Will you need in the final history of this earth? And when he told me like this, beloved brothers, I could see many little huts in different places. What was in them was very minimal. But oh, what a wonder, wonder to be able to enter and have everything you need. It is great what God wants to do with each one of us. What we have to do is throw ourselves into his arms and fulfill his plan. While I was seeing all this, and I was ecstatic because I like to see the people who are planting in the mountains. It is wonderful to know that there are many who are fulfilling the word of God. Suddenly I heard the voice again, which continued saying, flee from arrogance and live in humility, being charitable to one another. Make a garden and plant vineyards, he said, and take care of it and reap the harvest. Prepare your souls to be in harmony with my sayings. Collect the rain in due season and water the vineyard. Occupy yourselves with fear and trembling in the word of salvation. And when he said this last sentence, dear brothers, it was tremendous because I saw many people. I always said, Lord, where are your children who are really looking for you with all your hearts? It is my concern and it is my prayer in recent years. So when I began to see how the people cared for their salvation with fear and trembling, I became joyful because I saw many huts, many places in different parts where people knelt, 
sought the Lord. They always looked. They always took the time to be there in communion with them all the time, and while they were doing things during the day, they were also there praying, meditating, singing, and it was wonderful to see how they sought at all times to be in consecration with the Lord. And while I was watching those wonderful scenes, the instructions followed. Flee from death. Do not mix with the unfaithful. Whoever already has received the one who does not have and live in thanksgiving until my soon coming. If your brother prospers and strives, he will receive my blessing and do not condemn him for that because the world is mine and I distribute to each one according to my right. If there is discontent, he kept saying, ask for my direction. Truly, truly, I tell you that I will give it to you as I gave it to Solomon. Do not fear, follow me, because for a test of salvation it is given. Do not hide from your brother in need, because my life was given for you in the great tightness. Then he paused, and at that moment, I thought I was going to see something of what he had already mentioned. But nevertheless, I saw another scene of something that had not yet been spoken to me. In that scene, I began to see many ladies in different parts of the world, ladies who claimed to be Christians, ladies who claimed to be Seventh-day Adventists. But their dress, their way of being, their way of speaking, everything was quite the opposite to what they said with their mouths that they were, that they were Christians and Seventh-day Adventists. Then when I saw this, quickly the voice began to speak again and said to me, Women, dress as saints and piles of peace who carry the gospel in their hearts and walking, spreading the good news of salvation. Seek to save yourselves by being chaste in modesty and constant prayer, avoiding carrying in your bodies the fire of perdition. This was tremendous for me, brothers, because I had never heard this. Avoiding carrying in your bodies the fire of perdition. It is tremendous. As the Lord sees us, because the Lord sees us transparent, as the Lord is seeing every human being in this world, not in order to judge us, but in order that we know and demonstrate to the world that we are children of God or we are not children of God. And since he cannot be deceived, then he can speak with all justice because he knows what each one of us gives. Then the voice continued saying, Men, act with holy respect and know that as priest of the home you must govern well in your house with fasting and supplication, asking to reflect the heavenly character in you. Govern your children in holy discipline and admonition, knowing that they are yours for a moment because they are mine by redemption. Each family must live in holy and pious harmony, respecting the rights of others and knowing that this short experience is a prelude to Jacob's time of anguish. At that moment, I could see very beautiful mountains. They were planted. There were four or five cabins in different places of the mountain section. And all of them lived in harmony. All lived in happiness. All respecting other people's spaces. 
all respecting family privacy as God commanded. It was so beautiful, so different from what we see today that each one wants to live in the other's house. And the Lord does not call us to that. The Lord is calling us to the field so that we have a time to meet Him, to seek that holiness without which we will never see the Lord and that I was seeing at that moment. And I was rejoicing to see that peace and tranquility. While I was watching that, the voice continued giving instructions. Look for me in solitude and you will live. Look for me in the morning, at noon, and in the evening. Be therefore like Daniel, so that when you are cast into the lions, my angel may keep you from certain death. Be firm like Daniel in eating. For my spirit rests on bodies that praise and glorify me. So be industrious like Joseph, who saved an entire nation by listening to my voice. Be determined like Ruth, who without knowing what her destiny would bring, she went forward to distant lands and for the love of God and her mother-in-law, found salvation. Be brave like Esther, who in the face of death stood up and fought for her own. Be therefore like Jeremiah, whose eyes like rivers wept, bearing the word of truth and judgment. So be like Elijah, who came so close to me that I had to take him to heaven. Be like Elisha, who, in the face of antagonism, his oppressors died. Be then, he continued, like John the Baptist, who gave his life as an offering for his mission. Where are the 144,000? He asked this question. And when he asked this question, I immediately said, Lord, where? Where is that they are? Where is that they are? Won't I know? Was what he answered me. So the Lord knows where the 144,000 are, beloved. For him there is nothing hidden. These vessels, he continues saying, are already prepared. They are already prepared for the final outcome. And although they behave as such, they are gold inside and out, although they are made of clay. I know they are gold inside. It was wonderful to see this, beloved, because I was suspended in the air. When I was suspended in the air, I could see the world down. And when I could see the world down, I began to see these little lights around the globe. And it was wonderful to see how these little lights that they were showing me, they were indicating to me that they were about 144,000. That 144,000 are already chosen. The Holy Spirit is working with them and is preparing them for that final investment so that the heavenly order is given and they go out to this world to give the final message without mixing a hundred percent true message so i became so happy and so joyful my being was jumping rejoicing for everything i was seeing at that moment then while i was seeing that suddenly the voice continued and said but they are despised and taken for a little but for me, they are precious gold. But as I live, that none will escape my scrutiny eye. And I will know the truth. And the truth will shine in perpetual eternity. There is none of them that is not watched by my eye. For they are precious to me and my kingdom. But woe, woe to the one who wastes 
this valuable time because it is not them, but it is me who they despise. So at that time, I saw when they were launched into the world, they were carrying the message of salvation. But nevertheless, there were several, a lot, who did not listen. But the Lord had already declared that although many despised them, they were valuable to Him. And with everything and that, although I felt sad because I saw some people who did not accept, or in some cases, in some corners of the world, many who did not accept, but nevertheless, it filled me with joy to know that although they were despised, they were not despising them, but the Lord, and that they were precious to the Lord. So while I was seeing all that, and I was ecstatic in everything that they were indicating to me, of the instructions and how they showed it to me, suddenly I heard the voice, this time strong and firm, that said, prepare, 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 and do not turn around those who put their hand to the plow, because the day is coming and everything must be ready. He who tries to save his life selfishly will lose it, but he who wishes to give it to others will save it. These are my sayings and my ordinances, said a voice. Live in peace and seek it where only you can truly find it. Seek me and you will live. Seek me with all your heart and he ended by saying dear brothers do this and you will live faithfully before my God I have told you what the Lord has given me this day so that we can all have the exact instructions of what God wants from each one of us I hope with all with all with all my heart and I constantly pray to the Lord that this really is an experience in our lives and that we prepare, beloved brothers, because the end is closer than we think. Let's see what is happening around the world. Let's see how the final outcome reaches us. Please read the Great Controversy, Chapter 1, because God said that the same sign that was given to Jerusalem is the same that is given to us. So let us seek the Lord with all our hearts, dear brethren, and do not hesitate to do the will of God. If we have to be afraid of something, it is of not fulfilling the will of God, as long as we fulfill the will of God, even though we do not understand, then the Lord can work in our lives. May the Lord bless you all.